Spina bifida is a condition of open neural tube in the spinal cord area, but it's really a disorganization of the anatomy of the entire uh, nervous system from the brain down to the tail end of the spinal cord. The levels or the layers of the embryo are, th uh, the embryo is divided into three layers basically, and the uh, upper layer becomes both the skin and the nervous system because the nervous system folds up into a, a uh, tube and then sort of zips off. And if you imagine that the closure of the zipper got stuck near the end so that the uh, nervous layer stayed open, then that would be an open neural tube defect. So you actually have the nervous tissue that would have been the spinal cord exposed at the back with an opening over the skin, which, which uh, did not form around it. And then the other layers that would normally close around it that would form the bones and muscles are also not there. So it's, uh, it's really an opening where you actually can see the, the contents of the nervous system uh, from the outside. But the anatomy of the problem goes far beyond that opening and uh, particularly includes an, uh, abnormalities in the lower part of the brain stem and cerebellum so that the vermis of the cerebellum hangs down well into the spinal cord area. It's almost as if the whole nervous system was tilted back and drawn backwards toward this, this area of opening at the, at the lower end of the uh, spinal cord. And that's called a Chiari malformation, a type 2 Chiari malformation, or Arnold Chiari malformation. And this is associated with uh, problems with the brainstem in some children and in a minority of the, of the children born with spina bifida, we actually have to do surgery to take pressure off of there. And the more common uh, consequence of this is that the uh, uh, fetus develops a condition called hydrocephalus, which means too much water in the brain. And that means the ventricles, which are normally present and contain fluid, become much larger than they should be. And the, uh, as a result, the head might ultimately grow. And this is treated with a shunt uh, to divert the fluid after the baby is born. The causes of spina bifida currently are unknown. We know that there may be some genetic factors in some cases. We know that folic acid supplementation helps reduce the risk. So when we look at the prenatal ultrasound and MRI, we roughly see where the level of the lesion is. And depending upon where the spina bifida occurs on the spine, there's various degrees of motor impairment in the legs. So the higher the level of the lesion, the more likely you are to have difficulties walking. Cognitive development is generally not limited in kids with spina bifida, although depends to some degree on more the hydrocephalus than on the level of the lesion. Uh, many of the kids with hydrocephalus have specific learning disabilities. However, with proper special education, we now have a lot of our kids going to college at this point in time, which is very encouraging. How do we close these after birth? Basically, uh, if you if you recall that uh, the anatomical abnormality is that instead of rolling up into a tube, we've got this, this uh, system that is open, we would go through and take each one of those layers, the layer of the spinal cord itself, and roll it up into a small tube, find the layer of the tissue that would have been the, uh, the tough, durable covering over the spinal cord, which is called the dura, and, and uh, dissect out a layer like that and bring it together and close it up and then bring the skin together and close it. So the surgery for closure is uh, fairly simple. Many of the children with spina bifida have problems with neurogenic bladder. In fact, that's more the rule than the exception. The drugs that we tend to use for kids with spina bifida tend to be urologically based in general to help with bladder capacity and also to allow the kidneys to remain healthy. Uh, there's no medical or pharmaceutical treatment for spina bifida or hydrocephalus in this population of kids itself. The nerves to the bowel and bladder are affected, um, but there are things that can be done to, um, to deal with these um, that a urologist would, would help the family deal with er from early on. 
um, assessing the bladder function. Um, many children are on a uh, catheterization program where they use a little tube or catheter to empty the bladder on a regular basis, three or four times a day. And um, the child who's 10 years old would um, hopefully have learned to do that, have learned to do that all by themselves. So independence is always fostered no matter what the care is that is required. There are many opportunities for, for children with spina bifida to be involved in sporting activities. Um, there are such things as uh, wheelchair sports, um, skiing, um, hockey, sledge hockey. They do on little sleds if they can't, um, you know, if they can't be upright on skates, they're little sledge hockey, uh, swimming, basketball, Special Olympics, there are many. Um, we have competitive ski, we have a young lady who's actually an Olympi Olympian competitive skier. Um, so it's pretty exciting.